so that was everything I wanted to talk about. Um, so what about the the, the Indoraptor? That thing was pretty cool. The oh, I-Raptor. now we're going straight into Jurassic World. It's pretty dope. I mean, like, I well, that's the interesting thing about Jurassic World within itself is that, like, well, good a, a lot of good plots are the culmination of a lot of uh, coincidences. Like, good plots come together when, like, the the coincidences you want to happen do end up happening. So if you can think of a lot of movies that you like, like, some of them just so happen to be the perfect storm to make something bad happen. Mm-hmm. And the, you know, Jurassic Park 1 was a perfect storm of the things that, you know, Hammond neglected. With a literal storm. Yeah. <laughs> Including a storm that creates this nightmare for a scenario for him. And that uh, Jurassic World within itself is just... The, it, I mean, I don't even understand how, like, terrible it goes. Like, what was the inciting incident that causes everything to go squirrely? In Jurassic in first, World? Yeah, the first one. In Jurassic World, and depending on who you ask, it's, um, the Endoraptor raptor is in his pen. Mm-hmm. And first of all, it's implied that the pen is too small for the raptor. Mm-hmm. And so, apparently, the Endoraptor can also magically camouflage not only its physical appearance, but mm-hmm. also its thermal signature. And so, the yeah. thermal cameras were not able to detect where he was. Oh, and that it escapes, correct? Yeah, and so, as a result, oh, okay. they go into the pen. First of all, they go into the pen through the, like, big door, not like one of the small side doors that they apparently had. Mm-hmm. And because the door, the gate is open, it literally just runs out of the gate like your cat does when you come home. Yeah. And that's, that is the inciting incident. Like there's no malice here like there was in Jurassic Park. So the, and the, literally the Jurassic World people have even less of a leg to stand on. And that's interesting because I mean, it's, it's meant to also be, you know, like when science goes too far, quote unquote, you know, you didn't think about if you should, you thought about if you could. And the, yeah, when science goes too far, then, you know, the creation, the Frankenstein's monster can run amok. And that's interesting to see how far that went, because a lot of Michael uh, Crichton's writing has to do with people and how they interact with an amusement society or an amusement uh, situation where, like, Westworld is about, what if we could just kill people without thinking about it? And, like, uh, Jurassic Park is like, what if amusement parks, but with dinosaur? And so (laughs) when you put people in these crazy situations, then they go hog wild and we take everything and pump it up to 11 the entire situation and it's just interesting how the first movie de- like like we've been saying dealt with all of those human needs all those human problems that like oh yeah this was just a mismanaged like operation that they they cared too much about the fluff like any of those you know stretch goals versus the core code you know like core uh issues and then like they kind of go off the rails and they get farther away from the source material where the last one's just like we made something we made a creature so dope that it ate everybody at the park <laughs> like, <laughs> like it, it's 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 uh, it, it's a function of the time that like even the movie is like uh, it's remark it's so meta cuz in the movie they're talking about like oh we spared no expense in making this crazy new monster that did never existed and so we have to go above and beyond to entertain audiences while the audience that came to see the movie also wanted to see a bigger bad monster. So it's like this whole meta commentary on like why people even go to the movies. It's it's just hilarious where people go where they're just like, I, I, we, what do we even do from here? <laughs> they jumped the shark. That was the weirdest part. It was like the second Jurassic World was like, you already jumped the shark of like we made something monstrous and then mm-hmm. it did monster things. So what? where do you go next? <laughs> now a murder machine that can fit in your pocket like they just the next one's probably going to be the tiny dinosaurs and it's that going to be the Indo what they were talking about in the first Wait, Jurassic really? World yeah they were like imagine it a bunch of them we could run into tunnels and blow and they have like different sizes of the animals inside that lab right before um god I forgot that character's name he gets his hand bitten off and then I think blue eats him oh yeah the um the military guy yeah Mm-hmm. That's just cool. Like, yeah, just people <laughs> suck. the The moral of these movies is people suck. Mm-hmm. That's about right. Anyway, I have been your personal brain trainer, Cameron Boozer Jumeri. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, Kian, as the personal mind fiend, would you like to plug anything? Mm-hmm. Thank you for giving me that opportunity after derailing the whole conversation. Oh no, this is a bonus episode now. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Your personal mind fiend, Keon Boozer Jamari, can be found at his own personal podcast called Lock L A W K Life Advice with Keon. Cameron's guest guest starred in a bunch of the episodes. 
They're super fun and more about self-motivation. You can also find me on Instagram at keonbuzar.cinema and uh, Print3D LLC. Those are uh, the 3D, my 3D printing, well, I mean, my photography and 3D printing Instagrams, respectively. And, uh, yeah, I'm all, up, I'm all up on the internet, so uh, give, me, give me a shout. And Cameron, you, you keep on, keep on keeping on. I love this show and I love what you're doing. I'm really glad to hear that, buddy. And as for us as finding the small stuff, you can find us at Small Stuff Show on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. We also happen to have a Patreon for Small Stuff Show, and I really hope you guys Ooh. will go check it out. My plan is to start setting some hilarious goals, mostly in terms of getting more listeners. And as we get those listeners, we'll come up with fun, different ways to celebrate. So Hell thank yeah. you all for uh, being just an excellent community. And I hope if you've been enjoying the episodes, you've been sharing them with friends. Uh, you've been leaving reviews on iTunes. And if you have to to or ideas and topics for episodes, you'll reach out on smallstuffshow at gmail.com or with hashtag smallstuffshow on Twitter. And again, your personal brain trainer, Cameron Boozer, Jamari, reminding you from movies to media to the world around us, it's details like these that make it worth sweating the small stuff. The tingles, pa pa ka ka ka.